Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. This post is from the subreddit Relationship Advice and it's by user throwaray4551683. A woman, 33 female, I, 36 male, am dating, posted my picture to an online cheaters page. I met Danielle on a dating app and we immediately hit it off. The conversation was super easy for us so we swapped numbers and spent the next two weeks texting and talking on the phone. I explained early on that I want to take my time because not only am I looking for something serious but also have work commitments for the next few months. I work in tech product sales which can be very busy and also involve me leaving the city for a few days at a time. She said she understood and was also looking for something long term. Great! We met the weekend before Valentine's and had a nice restaurant date followed by dessert and coffee. We finished with a kiss and I walked her back to her car. It was definitely the best date I've been on since my last relationship. The next day I called her to say I was looking forward to seeing her again and would plan something when I get back. I live in a major North American city and from the 15th to the 17th I was booked 3 hours away for on-site client meetings. I told her about this and let her know we'd keep in touch. On the Friday that I'm due to get back, I get a message from a close female friend asking who I pissed off. I have no clue what she's talking about. She sends me a screenshot of my photo and what looks like a Facebook page and tells me it's a private group where women call out men for cheating. It's called, are we dating the same guy? And this particular group is just for people from my city. In the screenshot, multiple people are posting under my picture with mostly harmless comments like, Oh, I went on a date with him years ago and he was okay. But there were others like, PM me for the tea. And one woman said, He's an angry a-hole, stay away for your safety. Because it's Facebook, I instantly recognized her name as someone I went on a date with last summer who I had to block after she repeatedly tried to sell me her cat absolute lunatic. So it was one of her cats, maybe. A few things about me. I am single, I have never been married and my last relationship was over a year ago. I am very selective and Danielle was the first date I'd been on since the end of summer. I am also a very private person. I don't use social media and I don't kiss and tell. The fact that my photo is on this site is mortifying. What makes matters worse is when I got home I started getting texts from a bunch of other people I know either laughing at me or calling me a womanizer. As of now, I'm aware that several female friends have seen it. One coworker, my sister, and a woman I know who lives in the same building as me that excitedly grabbed me when I was leaving this morning to tell me, I saw you on that Facebook group. Apparently, it's a lot more popular than I realized. There's only one person who would have the motivation to do this. So I called Danielle on the weekend and asked her. Initially, she denied it. But after some prodding, that flipped to apparently her friend posting it. Why? Because a few of them had gotten tipsy together on Valentine's as they're all single. My name came up after her friends asked why she wasn't with me that night after the great date she had told them about. Apparently, me not being around as I was leaving early the next morning for work was suspicious as was the fact we'd been talking for multiple weeks but she'd never seen my place. She gave them a picture I used on the dating app and one of them posted it. She told me she was so sorry but that I seemed too good to be true. Her last relationship ended due to cheating and she wanted to make sure I wasn't married or in a relationship. I told her I needed some time to think and would be in touch. That was Saturday. We've been silent until today when I woke up to dozens of messages from her saying things along the lines of, I'm so sorry, I'm so angry with myself for this. And then the real truth, it was her that posted it. She wanted to come completely clean and apologized for lying telling me she panicked when I confronted her but she wants it all out now. She sent me screenshots unprovoked of the PM conversations she was having with women in the group about me. Aside from the one head case I mentioned earlier, there was nothing accusatory. But what I couldn't get over was how they were discussing me in such an open manner. 
It had nothing to do whether I was single or cheating. It was stuff like, he took me to this restaurant. He drives this kind of car. This is what he's like in bed. This is what his place is like. This is how much money I think he makes. I would never talk about exes or people I've dated like that. And if a guy tried to talk to me about Danielle like that, I'd think he was an effing weirdo and tell him to stop. My two closest female friends are divided on this, so I'm here for advice. One thinks that women need to protect themselves against predators and violence, and groups like these are necessary. The other is angry on my behalf because the presumption of men being posted to that group is that they're cheaters or sketchy. Otherwise, why would anyone even post them there? I really don't know what to do next. I've never had to deal with anything remotely like this before. I like Danielle, but it was one date. She also lied to me about it at first. This seems like a headache and we've never even had sex yet. Is she going to get even more paranoid after that? It doesn't feel like we're compatible. This feels like the past three weeks of us talking have been one massive waste and that actually stinks because she's the first person I've really liked since my ex. Well OP, if I was in your position, I wouldn't pursue this relationship. I understand what your first friend is saying regarding predators and I agree with her, but it's not just men that are predators and also, that group wasn't for predator victims. It was to just find out if somebody was dating the same guy because, hey, guess what? Cheaters exist. And in any case, that group wasn't discussing if you were a cheater or not. They were talking about you, about your personal life, about what they know. That was absolute gossip. Nothing positive came out of that discussion regarding you. Now, of course, maybe somebody could go on a stretch and say, hey, but OP is doing the same thing by posting his story on Reddit. Well, OP hasn't posted Danielle's picture, hasn't said her real name, doesn't say where she lives or anything like that. Anyways, OP, she didn't just put you on that Facebook group for people to discuss you, she lied about it. Because she needed to make sure. And I'm sorry somebody cheated on her in the past, maybe she needs to work on that in order to get over the trust issues. But that doesn't give her the right to do what she did to you. And then lying about it just makes it worse. I wouldn't pursue this relationship. And what about you guys? What would you do if you were in OP's shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Hounds of Love says, I am really surprised you're considering moving forward with her after this. She lied to you. She invited judgment of you. She is very vulnerable to the opinions of others and she is insecure. Insecurity definitely does not bode well with a job that will take you away from home often. This is a lot for one date and quite frankly below the maturity level I'd expect of a 33 year old woman. I think you should let her go. Chalk this up to a story you'll laugh about someday on future dates and get back out there. Magic Carpet 5846 says, If I were you, I'd just say this in a text for proof. Quote, I'm looking for something serious, but I made it clear I wanted to take things slowly as I have a busy next few months. I understand cheating is traumatic, but if after one date you're already resorting to posting my private information online, I think it's clear you're not ready for a serious relationship yet, and it's not fair to either of us. I hope you're able to heal, but you violated a lot of boundaries I have by seeking out information about me from my past and discussing things with others like how I was in bed and how much money I made. I've had to deal with co-workers and family thinking I'm a cheater when after one date it's not even reasonable to expect exclusivity anymore from either party, let alone something like this. I wish you well, it's clear your ex really did a number on you and you deserve to find peace and happiness, but I think it's best for us to go our separate ways. JM Flynn says, while I see your one friend's point that these groups can't help protect women, Danielle really jumped the gun. If you had dated for a while, become exclusive and did something considered a red flag or sketchy, okay, maybe then she has a motivation for posting. Though personally, I would never do this. In this case, she dumped her paranoia from her cheating ex onto you and put your face out there in a way where a lot of people, including people you know in real life, will just assume you are a cheater. This was after a pleasant date and a promise of a second one after your work obligation. You were very open and honest as far as I can tell, especially since you promised no fidelity immediately and that you would need to get to know each other better first. 
As for how to move forward, that's up to you, as I have no idea how strong the connection was with Danielle on that first date. If it was really something special, maybe you can laugh over this one day and move on. For me, however, I don't think this is a good foot to start a new relationship. Paranoia, public shaming and lying? That's a trifecta of too much too soon in my opinion. I need a nap please, says, as a mid-30s female, this chick sounds very insecure that she would pull this after only one date, especially since you clearly communicated your schedule. The only instance I can personally see myself using a Facebook forum like the one you referenced would be if a date or ex was abusive and I felt others needed to know. I would never talk about my boyfriend to see if he's cheating. I'd either talk to him like a freaking adult or leave. I would acknowledge her apology, tell her she caused you some unnecessary damage to your reputation and then say you're not compatible and move on. Recent Moose 1336 says, Wow, women who out other women like that are awful. These groups are meant to help women. Sorry, but there are a lot of awful men out there. Cheaters, abusers, deceitful men. I am not saying that there aren't women out there who aren't the same. I'm saying that these groups are for women, to protect women from men. She didn't know you. The dating world is scary. She wanted to check on you. The woman who called her out did her dirty and went against group rules. I understand you don't like it. I understand you're embarrassed. Unpopular opinion? Give her the benefit of the doubt. Alright, well the majority of the community agrees that OP should not pursue this and that Danielle needs some help. Except for that last comment, which actually was the bottle of the barrel comment, the most downvoted comment from the whole post. Anyways, OP did not give us any comments, so we don't have additional context, which means we move on straight to the update, but of course before that, here's another one of my playlists that I'm sure you'll be able to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on to the update. Back with an update, but firstly, a couple of quick notes based on the feedback I got. No, I am not Patrick or David or Eric or Pascal or Brett. Thank you for the PMs asking, as much as I'd like to be a Brett, since that was my favorite wrestler as a kid, it's concerning that these messages imply this seems to be happening so much that the identities can be confused. I don't care if you think my close female friend violated the sanctity of your super cool secret girls only club. As she told me, her loyalties are to me. She's known me since I was a child and knows that I didn't deserve to have my photo plastered there. I understand that those groups may be necessary for keeping women safe or finding predators, but their moderators should go harder in ensuring that it meets those goals rather than running a de facto gossip club where innocent people's personal lives are affected. I've had dozens of people reach out with very similar experience, so perhaps your rules should reflect that rather than just keep boys out. The lunatic who wanted to sell me her cat, the cat seemed like a cool dude, but I just wasn't in the market for a pet. He also had only three legs which made him run like a drunken sailor. All cats deserve love, I hope he got away from her. Finally, some of you alarmingly struggle with concepts of consent. I consented to my photo appearing on a dating app. I did not consent to my photo appearing in a is this guy trash group. These are not the same and the stigma and assumptions associated with both are vastly different. I really shouldn't have to explain this, but here we are. Regarding my not realizing how big this group was, three of the women in my life all found out about it the same way. On Valentine's Day, a radio show ran a segment on it, then it got picked up by blogs and social media. It even appeared on local television. My friend saw it on Twitter. Another saw a this guy was dating 12 women post that got shared and decided to investigate. My sister was texted by her friend about it and when they all rushed to check the group out, there I was. Great timing. It currently has over 50,000 members. Anyway, moving on. So I decided not to pursue things with Danielle. She took the post down during our radio silence but it mainly boiled down to just not seeing her in the same light anymore. I can accept that she is genuinely sorry, but I also know how I am and it wouldn't be fair to either of us. This is supposed to be the honeymoon period, everything is supposed to be light and cute. Now it's just suspicion and resentment. Not gonna lie, that period between when we first started talking to when I went away on my trip was really great. I looked forward to talking to her. 
When I would see a text, I got butterflies. When we kissed, it felt electric. And some people said what she did was such an obvious red flag, they were questioning why I was even hesitating. The reason is that I haven't felt like this in some time. My last relationship lasted five years, and after we broke up, I legitimately wondered if I could find that spark again. Especially after trying dating apps here and there and not having much luck finding the right person. I do want to feel that spark again and find my person. But holding on to something that already has these problems before it even starts is the wrong move. Instead, I'm simply happy I got to experience it. Now I know it's out there and possible again, not just with Danielle. But I'll be honest, I did wake up today thinking, hey, you never know, maybe a couple of months down the line, I'll think differently and maybe we'll go grab a drink. And then I saw she'd texted me. To preface, before I left the city for work, she sent me a photo with the message, don't forget about me. It was her in a bikini on a summer beach blowing a kiss. She's quite chesty, so it's not exactly safe for work, but there was no nudity. I opened today's text which read, Hey, I hope I'm not disturbing you, but I'd like to ask you to delete that picture I sent you. Do not share it with anyone. What the F? I replied, the only copy of that picture is in our chat thread. Do you seriously have this low an opinion of me? To which she apologized and said she was just making sure. Fine. At first I was annoyed, but then I realized the most important thing. It was a reminder I'd made the right decision. So I made another and deleted her number. Oh man, you gotta appreciate the irony of that last part where she sent him a message asking him not to share her picture but she had no problem sharing his on a Facebook group. Anyways, OP, you definitely made the right choice so here's hoping you find that spark again. It is out there as you now know. So all the best in the future OP and thank you for sharing. Take care. Now let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance and it's by user Denver Santiago. Don't calculate a table's bills the moment you get their order ticket. It makes it hard to keep track. You got it, boss. Hello, friends. This is my first post on the Malicious Compliance subreddit. While it may not be as juicy and dramatic as a number of the ones I've seen, I just wanted to share something that happened to me today while I was at work. Information. This does not take place in the US, Europe, or Australia. This is set in Asia. I won't clarify where since it's not important. Just wanted to give you guys context. For starters, I'm 23, a university student working part-time at my aunt's restaurant to make a little extra moolah. Edit meant moolah. Before the academic year starts. My job is pretty simple. It's an all-rounder job where I need to take people's orders, send tickets to the kitchen, calculate each table's bills, handle payments, and clear tables. I'm only here until the end of this week because I secured another gig elsewhere before the academic year starts. So I figured why not finish this week for a little extra cash before then. I get along with most of the staff, all of whom are a decade or so older than me, and said individuals work at the restaurant full time. There's another part timer, 19, who's working here and he comes to work whenever he's able since he is studying too. He wasn't around for a couple of weeks so I've been left to sort out most waitressing matters. My shifts during lunch hour get particularly busy, which is why my system keeping the workflow super smooth is a crucial point to this post. The moment after bills have been settled, tables need to be cleared immediately because new customers come pouring in and some insist on being seated even before the tables have been cleared or wiped down. I came up with a system in the three weeks that I've been working here that works for both myself and my colleagues. Upon receiving tickets for orders that have been received, I always key in their order according to the table they're set at so that it's less time consuming in the event other customers want to settle their respective bills. Customers are expected to come to the payment counter when they're ready to pay, so this system is a lot easier and much more efficient than letting tickets pile up and only calculating the bill right when customers are about to pay, which results in a long line. I always make it a point to ask customers if their food has all arrived, if they were satisfied with the quality of their order, and if they ordered anything else that I hadn't seen on their tickets. Once they verify their orders are correct, that's all. I go about my day and mind my business. That was until the other part-timer approached me earlier today. His point was an eyebrow raiser for sure. 
I'm not the type of person to pick fights or argue, so since he was so insistent that my way of doing things was making it difficult for him to keep track of additional orders at each table, I decided to just let him have it since he was so happy to tell me how to do my job. I simply smiled and nodded at him, making a beeline to the cleaning supplies and thinking to myself, you want me to stop punching in people's orders? Sure thing. For a solid hour or two, I only collected the tickets, bringing them to the cash register and letting them pile up, just as he requested. When I noticed customers stand up from their seats and make their way to the payment counter, I would speed walk to the cleaning supplies to start collecting plates to show that my hands were occupied and that I wouldn't be able to sort out people's bills. I left it all to my dear co-worker who tried telling me what to do and how to do it. It was the right call to make because the line that followed, due to his insistence on changing the system, snaked about halfway through the restaurant full of customers waiting their turn to pay their bills. Once lunch hour had died down, I smiled to myself and went back to keying in people's tickets the way I always had. My part-time co-worker sheepishly approached me with the new additions to existing orders since then. Well, Peep, he had a better way of doing things until he figured out it wasn't. Hopefully, he'll adopt your system after you leave. Anyways, thanks for sharing, OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.